Good afternoon, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Delilah and I make motherhood and lifestyle videos here on YouTube. I've been here for the last six years sharing vlogs and motherhood advice such as this. If you hear little shuffles and noises and stuff in the background, it's because my children are having quiet time right now. No, we're cleaning. Eloise is cleaning. Um, I'm done shuffles are the ball pit. She might be in the ball pit shuffling around, so you might hear her. Get clean enough the cars in the ball pit. So if you're wondering what the noises are in the background, that's what that is. But they're really good at playing quietly, so we're gonna go ahead and film this video. So as you can tell by the title of today's video, today we're gonna be talking about sleeping. How we got our babies to sleep through the night, how we got them to appreciate sleep and to self-soothe, um, I want to put a disclaimer on this and tell you that I am in no way, shape, or form an expert on this. I am simply a mother sharing my own experience with my three children and what we're going to be doing with baby number four on the way in August. We've learned so much over the years. We've come from not knowing literally anything to knowing a lot. And a lot of what we've learned has simply come from experience. And I think there's so much value in seasoned mothers sharing their experiences. Like if I think about it, if I'm needing advice on something, I'm first going to go to a mother I know and trust who's been through something similar before I would go to an expert because there's just something so comforting knowing that these moms have been there, they've done it, they've gone through it, or maybe they're currently going through it and you can bounce ideas off of each other. I'm not an expert, but I do think there's a lot of value in that and so I wanna share our experience with you. My goal with this video is to help any moms who are currently on the struggle bus right now and in desperate need of a good night's sleep. There is no right or wrong way to train your child to sleep. Uh, every child is so incredibly different and will need a different approach to sleep training. And I say sleep training loosely because truthfully in my experience we sleep trained officially one time and then the other two times we really didn't. I'll get into that in a little bit. As I was saying, each child is gonna need something completely different. Each parent is gonna have a different opinion and going to feel a different way about the different methods of training your children to sleep. And so there's there's no like handwritten book of like, this is what you should be doing. We've taken a different approach with each child and we've learned so much through those experiences. This is something I get comments on and DMs on and emails on all the time. And so now that my youngest son is officially sleeping through the night, this felt like the perfect time to sit down and pass on some of my wisdom to you. So I think the best way for me to approach this video is to start by sharing my experience with each child um, and going through the situation we were in at the time, how we approached those situations and how we trained our children to sleep. And then at the end, I'm going to go over like the the four or five basic main points that I really want to get across, my main tips and advice. I advise you not to skip through to the end of the video unless you're just like desperate and need some advice like right now, but I think there's, like I said, a lot of value in just hearing people's experiences, especially if you are in that boat right now. I know how helpful it is for me to hear other moms talking about themselves going through the exact same experiences and what they did and how they approached it. And so hearing the full story, I think is really beneficial. So we're gonna start with my oldest. Six years ago, I was pregnant with my firstborn child and I knew absolutely nothing. I was so naive that I actually thought that sleeping through the night just came naturally. Like sleeping wasn't something that needed to be learned. It was just a natural thing that babies did. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> because she was my first, I was able to do everything on demand with her and that's really all I knew. We did everything on demand day and night. That was where my first mistake was and I didn't realize it at the time. We had no schedule, no routine, and by the time she was two and a half months old, we, we were desperate. I remember there were times in the middle of the night when I would 
stick her in the wrap and just walk back and forth and back and forth and back and forth across her little house just trying anything I could possibly think of to get her to sleep. She wouldn't take naps on her own and to actually get her to go to sleep for those naps took longer than the amount of time she would actually sleep for. And at this point, Zach and I were growing so desperate. I was honestly sinking pretty deep into a postpartum depression. Just lack of sleep. Lack of sleep can do things to you. It was to the point where we would bounce her, and I don't mean rocking. Honestly, a gentle rocking to sleep would have been totally fine and we wouldn't have been in this situation at all, but the only way we could get her to sleep was by bouncing, like standing and bouncing up and down. Like we were, like sometimes, I kid you not, we were literally jumping up and down, trying so desperately to get her to sleep. We were like rocking her, not rocking her, jumping her, bouncing her um, for up to 45 minutes before she finally fell asleep and for most of that time she was crying just so tired crying because she was tired when she would finally fall asleep we would try to ever so slowly and carefully put her down and then as soon as we did she was awake again and guess what we had to start that whole process over again and you can imagine it wasn't very fun and we were growing desperate and so I did a lot of research and uh, finally decided to try the controlled cry it out method. Now when people hear cry it out, some people get really uptight and angry about this. Uh, some moms are totally for this. There are very divided opinions on the controlled or cried out method. Now listen, I don't wanna hear any judgmental opinions in the comments either directed toward me or to any other moms. The comment section should be a place where we go to support one another and to share helpful advice and to not be judging others. So please, if you have a nasty opinion on something, don't say it, it's gonna get deleted uh, because this is not the place for that. This video is to offer encouragement and to uplift and to help other moms, not, not to bring them down. At this point, I figured she was crying just as much in my arms as she was crying when I put her down. So I figured we had nothing to lose and we needed to do something before we went absolutely insane. So from what I could gather, there were a few important rules you needed to follow in order for this method to work. The first one is consistency. You needed to be consistent. You couldn't just give up after a couple days. You had to give it your all. It was either you're all in or you're all out. They needed their own space where they would be safe but alone. Bedtime routine was really important to do the same thing before bed every single night. And the one that really got me was no soother because then they're relying on something that they're not at that age able to grab and to put into their mouth. So no soother. Uh, they had to learn to self-soothe without that. And if they were to wake up in the middle of the night to give them a good like 10 minutes before going in there to soothe them. Because oftentimes baby will come out of their sleep cycle and they'll wiggle around and they might cry or make noises, but I was surprised by how often after about nine or 10 minutes, they would soothe themselves back to sleep all on their own. So as long as we gave them that time, they were able to figure it out. So basically how it worked is we would do the whole bedtime routine, we'd get her sleepy. The big thing was to put her down drowsy, but not asleep. So get her sleepy, but don't let her fall asleep in your arms or don't let them fall asleep while they're nursing. Put them down before they fall asleep and then they have to learn how to do the rest. So put them down lovingly, just you know, kiss them goodnight and walk out the door if they cry. Uh, go in after five minutes, try to soothe them. I think with this particular method, we weren't supposed to pick them up to soothe them. We were supposed to leave them in their crib. And then if they continued crying, wait another 10 minutes and then go in and soothe them. And if they continued crying more, go in after 15 minutes. And then after that, it was every 15 minutes until they fell asleep. And then if they woke up in the middle of the night, like I said, to wait the 10 minutes. Um, and then if they continue crying, to do the whole process all over again. Again. And the same thing went for naps as well. That's the gist of the controlled cry it out method that we use with her. And over time we did modify it a little bit to what we felt was best for her, but I could not believe 
how well this worked. Even that first night, she was sleeping so much better and it just continued to improve with each night that followed. Our parents were shocked. They couldn't believe it. Like it was incredible. To this day, she is still our best sleeper and honestly, it was one of the best things that we ever did for her. She wasn't officially sleeping through the night until she was about one year old. She just wanted to nurse like once or twice in the middle of the night. It was like a quick five or 10 minute nurse and then she went back to sleep totally on her own. And I mean, that wasn't a problem for me. I didn't mind doing that. Um, and so we did that until she just dropped that on her own. And then all of a sudden she was sleeping through the night and she slept through the night ever since. So we learned a lot of things with her and uh, a lot of things that we wanted to do differently with the next child so that we hopefully wouldn't reach that point of desperation. That brings us to Theodore. Right from the get-go, we started making habits. We went into a routine. We had like a two week grace period where I'm learning him, he's learning me. We're kind of getting to know each other. Um, and then after that like newborn bliss kind of wore off, we got into a loose routine, um, not a schedule, but a routine. So we, we did the eat, play, sleep routine. So he would sleep when he woke up, that's when he ate and then he played and then he went to sleep when he woke up, that's when he played and he went to sleep. And it was the same thing every day. I would cuddle him to sleep sometimes and we did some contact naps and I would nurse him to sleep, especially in those early newborn days when they're so sleepy. But we also really wanted to start getting him into the practice and the habit of soothing himself to sleep. So a lot of the time I would get him all swaddled up and cozy and set him down when he was sleepy but not sleeping. Being consistent with that habit I think really really helped us um, as, as time went on. And I was also very aware of what kind of sleeping habits I wanted him to have. Uh, we always used a sound machine. I swear by sound machines because it helps drown out the outside noise. So especially with like the second, third, fourth child, this is key so that they don't wake up to their siblings being noisy outside. That sound also makes them know that, oh, okay, now it's time to go to sleep. It's like that little trigger to help them fall asleep. We never did blackout curtains. I know some moms swear by them. We didn't want our babies to only be in the habit of sleeping when it's pitch black. We wanted them to be able to sleep wherever they were any time of day. So we never did blackout curtains and it was never an issue for us. And we let him have his soother until he was like one and a half. So even though it meant when he lost his soother in the middle of the night, I had to help him find it. We wanted to avoid thumb sucking, which was an issue the first time around. So we didn't want to have that happen again because obviously they're gonna learn to self-soothe themselves somehow and thumb sucking is a natural way to do that. Um, but obviously it's a lot harder to take a thumb away than it is to take a soother away. So. We stuck with the soother. We did have to get up more frequently to give it back to him, but ultimately I'm, I'm glad we did that. The biggest thing I did differently this time was I watched for his sleepy cues. And as soon as he was starting to show me that he was sleepy, whether he was like yawning or just kind of like stretching or not being as enthusiastic about what he was playing with, um, rubbing his eyes, that was my cue to get him down right away before he reached the point where he was overtired and cranky, which was probably my biggest issue with Eloise and I never realized it. Once they reach that point where they're overtired and cranky, it is so much harder to get them to go to sleep. Babies have an awake window and when they're really little, that awake window is really short. And as they get older, that awake window gets bigger. So I was very aware of that awake window and I watched the clock and I watched his sleepy cues and I got him to bed when he needed to go to bed and that was such a game changer. His sleeping habits were much better but every baby reaches that three month sleep regression and then their further sleep regressions the older that they get, right? So as soon as my babies hit that sleep regression, that's my cue to start doing some kind of sleep training. With Theo, the regression wasn't nearly as bad as it was with our firstborn. So we decided to do a much more mild version of the sleep training we had done before. Because we lived in a small home, we only had two bedrooms that were really available to us at that time. Eloise was in one of those bedrooms, we were in the other bedroom, and so Theo was with us while we sleep trained. So the fact that we were so close to him already made this a lot more 
mild. I don't remember having to let him cry it out very much. Like, I don't think that was ever a huge issue with him. The biggest thing was the wake-ups in the middle of the night. And when they are so close to you, when they're in the same room as you, it's really hard not to uh, wake up and tend to them as soon as they start like wiggling and squirming and crying in the middle of the night. At about six months, he was really outgrowing his bassinet and so he moved into or the room with Eloise and um, because they were sharing a room, when he'd wake up in the middle of the night, I obviously didn't want to disturb Eloise. I didn't want him to wake up Eloise. So I would go in there, bring him to our bedroom uh, and nurse him. And then I found myself very often just falling asleep, nursing him and then he'd fall asleep and we'd fall asleep together and we'd end up cuddling until morning, which I honestly, Love. Theo and I did a lot of co-sleeping and those are some of my most cherished memories. It is something that every sleep expert is going to tell you not to do, but I wouldn't take it back for a second. Again, I know co-sleeping is one of those touchy subjects. Some moms are very much against it. Some moms are totally for it. It's not gonna work for everyone or for every baby, but for us in that moment, that was exactly what we needed and it was great. So already you can see a massive difference between our first and our second just because of the knowledge that I had, the experience that I had from that first time around. When he was about a year and a half, we started realizing that even though I wasn't nursing him to sleep, like I had made sure this whole time that we were nursing in the middle of the night that I never nursed him to sleep. He'd nurse and then he'd fall asleep on his own because that's what, you know, the sleep experts say to do. It didn't matter because he was still relying so heavily on that nighttime feed that he couldn't fall asleep without it, even though he wasn't falling asleep while nursing. So when I realized this, we tried to break the habit. We tried to have Zach go in there instead of me, because as soon as he'd see me, he'd want to nurse. We tried offering him water and a soother and just like comforting him. And honestly, it didn't really work. It really didn't stop until he decided he was ready. And when he was ready to drop that night, those nighttime feeds, he just started sleeping right through the night all on his own. So that was about one and a half years that he started sleeping through the night and he was weaned. So that was Theo. Now moving on to our third child. Uh, with him, we took an even more gentler approach and we really didn't sleep train at all. Again, I was very aware of the habits that we were trying to form with him. And so we did pretty much the same thing that we did with Theo, uh, no blackout curtains, having him fall asleep on his own sometimes. But then I also wanted him to be able to fall asleep like wherever we were, no matter the noise or the light or what position he was in, if he was being carried, if he wasn't being carried, Zach is being very noisy outside right now. So I tried to have him fall asleep in different locations on a more frequent basis. So we would have him fall asleep in his bassinet and miss the chaos of the two other kids running around and being noisy during the day. He would fall asleep in the carrier sometimes. I wore him in the wrap quite often, especially if we were out grocery shopping or running errands. He was always in different locations and different environments. Sometimes he was in his crib, sometimes he's in the bassinet, sometimes he was on our bed or in the wrap. We really wanted him to develop an ability to sleep wherever he was. Again, I watched really closely for his sleepy cues and was very aware of his awake windows. And when that first sleep regression hit, I tried not to form any habits too quickly. After our first experience with our daughter, it has scarred us. And you can imagine it's, it's difficult now, especially now when our children, when our babies don't want to sleep because it just brings us right back to that time when we were in, in, in such a horrible place. And so I didn't want to get to that point where we had to literally like jump and bounce for 45 minutes, but I also didn't really want to sleep train if I didn't have to. We just continued with the routine that we were in. Again, we were in this like eat, play, sleep routine that's worked so good for us with all of our babies and being very aware of his awake windows and sleepy cues and putting him down drowsy but awake. The more kids you have, the harder it is to be there every time they start crying. This whole like cry it out method almost happens in a more natural way if that makes sense like I remember talking to my grandma about this once and she had six babies and she said like this cry it out method you're talking about sounds basically just like what happens naturally when you start to have more kids because you're not 
always able to be there quiet in a quiet room or environment to rock them to sleep for half an hour before you can put them down and leave the room. Like when you have five other kids running around the house, it just doesn't work that way. And so this training kind of just naturally happens. Not that we ever let him you know, scream for hours on end, but for five to 10 minute intervals, we would lovingly like wrap him up, lay him down, maybe sing to him, soothe him and leave the room. Um, and then come back every once in a while just to like calm him down, pick him up, rock him, soothe him, sing to him, whatever we needed to do, put him down again. And so this cry it out method kind of happened very loosely, but at the same time, we never like officially did anything. We never let him cry for a very long period of time and we would rock him to sleep. Like if we gave him 15 minutes, soothing him every once in a while he wasn't falling asleep then we would go in there and we would comfort him and we would try to rock him to sleep this does not produce a very quick and effective results i will say that if you are a lot more consistent um, and stern with your sleep training is going to happen much much faster but because we weren't quite as strict and stern the third time around it took quite a bit longer for him to start sleeping better, especially when he was teething or going through a sleep regression. And again, because he was our third child, we didn't come immediately to his every movement or squirm or cry. This gave him more of an opportunity to learn how to self-soothe on his own as well. Again, we never took a soother away. He still has his soother. And because I loved co-sleeping so much with Theo, I tried to do it again this time with William, but he's not a fan. He really didn't like co-sleeping. He much preferred his own space. For some reason, I just thought all babies naturally love to sleep together and co-sleep and cuddle, but that's just not the case. And so for him, he really just wanted his space. And so when he moved into his crib, he slept really well, but he would wake up every once in a while. And so I would bring him into our bed and, and nurse him and he, again, relied very heavily on nursing just like Theo did. Now we could go through the whole cry it out method and try to cut that habit, but I honestly, again, I don't mind. The sleep experts will say that's not a good habit to have. It works for us. And those midnight nursing sessions are some of the sweetest, honestly. And I actually found myself so thankful that in the middle of the night when he was crying, I knew that all I had to do was bring him into our bed and cuddle him and nurse him and he'd be fine. Instead of trying to bounce him or rock him to sleep or soothe him or, you know, try this and that to get him to calm down, all I had to do was cuddle him and nurse him. And that was a really nice thought. So whenever he would be teething or sick or going through a leap or something, he would nurse more frequently throughout the night. So there'd be more middle of the night wake ups. But on good nights, he would only be waking up like once in the middle of the night. Now recently he's decided he's done nursing altogether. So we have officially weaned. He took the lead on that, he decided he was done, and when he decided he was done, those middle of the night wake-ups stopped. For the last like three weeks, I would say, he has not been waking up in the middle of the night. That's another sweet thing about uh, nursing at night is that when they're done nursing, they usually, in, in my experience, start sleeping through the night. So it kind of goes hand in hand. So all my babies were officially sleeping through the night between one year and one and a half years. With all those different approaches, we still reached the same goal around the same time. Now I know it's not the same for everyone. I know babies who have been sleeping through the night since they were like one month old. And I know moms who are even now struggling with their five or six year olds who still aren't able to sleep through the night. Every child is so different. Um, and I'm not here to tell you that these are the things that you should do. And if you do these things, your child will sleep through the night by one year. Like that's, that's not how it works because there's, there's just no rule book. There's no one way of doing things, but this is my experience. And I just found it so interesting that even though we took three wildly different approaches, we all reached the same goal around the same time. So I just wanted to encourage any of you mamas who are going through this right now, or who are on the struggle bus and so sleep deprived and so desperate to get their babies to sleep through the night. And you're wondering, is this ever going to end? I promise you it will. One day you will sleep again, I promise. You are your child's parent, you're your child's mother. You know your child better 
than anybody else. And so you are the one who is best equipped to make decisions for your child and to help train them to sleep in the way that you see fit. Whatever method you decide on, whatever method you want to go with, to try and train your children to do this, that is up to you and it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks because they don't know your child like you do. Have faith, stick to it, it's gonna get better. But now I'm gonna just summarize a few of my biggest points, my biggest pieces of advice from a seasoned mother who has had experiences with this. This is what we're going to be doing with baby number four. And these are the things we've seen the best results from. So my number one piece of advice is to watch their sleepy cues and understand their awake windows. This is so important. Being aware of their awake windows and stimulating them when they need to be stimulated and then putting them down when they need to go down is going to make such a huge difference in how they even react to being put down for a nap or for bed. I can leave a resource either on the screen or linked below of approximate awake windows for each age. Now this varies by child. I remember my children, my, or at least my first two, their awake windows were longer than what the, the chart suggests and then my youngest who was a month early and so his awake windows were shorter. Having this kind of in the back of your mind helps so much knowing how to plan your day and your routine and your schedule. Number two, get them down before they reach that overtired and cranky stage. So watch so carefully for those sleepy cues, cues like rubbing their eyes, yawning, um, being less enthusiastic. You gotta watch closely because there's a very fine line between being sleepy and being overtired. Like they reach that overtired and cranky stage real fast. So if you're not on top of it and putting them down when they need to go down, you're gonna have a much harder time getting your babies to fall asleep. Um, especially if they're going through like a leap or teething or sickness or something else on top of that. Number three, routine, routine, routine. For us, the eat, play, sleep routine works wonders. It's so awesome for me as a mom of other children to have a routine like that, to know that like, okay, this is my window for when the baby's sleeping. So I've got some time to be with you guys, to get some work done. Um, and then when, when the baby wakes up, I need to go nurse the baby and then we can play together. And then when they're tired, I can put the baby down and we can play again. Like to be able to plan out your day like that is huge uh, for the baby and for you. I find that my babies really thrive on routine. And so that is a huge piece of advice. Number four, help your baby develop habits that you want them to have. So for us, like I've mentioned, we use the sound machine um, to help drown out outside noise. That's something I uh, hugely recommend. We also really try to get them to sleep without the blackout curtains and in different environments with different noises. And obviously putting them down drowsy but awake so that they can learn to self-soothe on their own is huge. And number five, do what is best for you and your baby. Not what is best for somebody else, not what somebody else thinks is best for you and your baby, but what you know is best for you and your baby. Because like I said, you are their parent and you know them better than anyone else and you are the most equipped to make decisions for them. And with that, I am going to bring this video to a close. I really, really hope and pray that this video helped you if you are in this situation right now. If you have something helpful to add to this conversation, I encourage you to leave a comment. Again, if whatever you have to say is not useful or beneficial, don't say it. I really want this video to be an encouragement to moms who are struggling right now and especially the comments to be a place where we can spur one another on and encourage one another and to lift each other up instead of to tear one another down. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.